Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I'm trying something a little bit different. Normally I try to condense my videos into 10 or 15 minutes and kind of just show the highlighted steps to get you through the process. But today I'm going to be working on a t-shirt rag rug and I'm gonna take a deeper dive into it and actually kind of go into some more of the uh, details as I work through the process. So let me know what you think. If you think I'm being excruciatingly boring, um, be nice, but you can tell me in the comments. Um, and let me know if you like more details or if you like just more of a condensed project. So let's get started. So here's the rug I've been working on. I'm just using black and gray to make kind of a zebra pattern for my silver safari bathroom. Um, but I thought I would back up a little bit and show you exactly how I sketched the design onto the mat. So, to start with, I just bought one of these uh, slip resistant, what does it say? Non-slip rug underlay uh, at the Dollar Tree. So I got it for a dollar. Let me get it open here. And it's really just about the perfect size uh, for a bath mat or something like that, which is what I'm working on right now. The one thing you want to do is kind of check the edges. Some of them are better than others. But before you get started, like right here, I don't know, can you see? Yeah. This isn't an even edge, so I want to trim it down. I'm probably going to trim it down all the way to here so that I have a nice clean edge. All right, so I've got my edges all cleaned up all the way around, and now I have my little piece of art that I want to put onto the mat so that I can tie the yarn in that pattern. So I'm just going to put this under here, and my I'm just going to show you a small amount of the artwork that I have in my head right now, but basically it's going to just be 10-inch um, square blocks and then this block has the heart shape in it. So I want to get everything lined up. I'm going to use some straight pins to kind of square up the mat because it's kind of stretchy and does whatever it wants. And you want to choose pretty simple patterns for this. I don't think you want to do anything too terribly intricate. Get this all lined up. And also I've been choosing um, to use sort of black and gray for my color scheme just because those are easy colors to find t-shirts in and to match the colors. So basically my art is going to be a block square of black with a light gray heart on it and then the next block will be a darker gray. So it's going to be sort of a checkered pattern. So. my black marker. <clears throat> I really did. Oh, there it is. All right. So I want to basically sketch out my heart with this silver and I'm going to sketch the black part with the black pen. So let's start with the easy part because you want to cover these lines, the whole line these are where you're going to actually tie your yarns. <clears throat> now when I get to the curves it's going to be a little interesting. I'm going to have to decide which color to draw on the line. But for this portion, obviously all of this is going to be black so it's pretty easy. 
but you do have to commit one of these lines to either the black or the gold so I'm not gonna get exactly curved lines when I draw out this pattern as long as I'm outside my heart I know that I've got black lines going on <clears throat> I'm going to stop and think, then I just do the easy part, <laughs> the black lines. And you do want to color every line because once you start tying on the yarns, you kind of lose track of where you are. So you want each little spot where you're going to tie a yarn to be marked with the appropriate color. So hopefully this is making sense, but like right here is a really interesting line because you can see the line is going straight through my little squares so I'm just gonna have to take a deep breath and trust that it's gonna work out okay as far as the design when it's all finished but it'll look remotely like a heart part of what makes it a little tricky is that you're not gonna tie a yarn on all four sides of this because it just gets too crowded so you're going to commit to just tying on the vertical or the horizontal direction. So I might not even have a yarn on this, on these lines here. But if I end up tying that direction, I guess I'm going to say those are black. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't think you want them to be silver. So we'll just commit those to black, which means that needs to be black as well. All of these are going to be black. Go back to silver then. Anyway, it's not an exact science, obviously, but you do want to sketch out a line on every I mean, I guess you could actually only sketch the lines on the horizontal or vertical if you wanted to. I'm afraid that might confuse me even more than normal. So, I'm coloring in the whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to keep sketching. And then I will be back when I have the whole design sketched out. But you kind of get the idea of it. And then we'll probably go back to the zebra print just because that one's farther along and I might actually be able to finish it for this video. Alright, I just watched some of this video and I realized I made it a lot harder to see by putting that silver on there and I could have just left it white but I since I was thinking so hard about the curves I wanted to actually commit a color to all of them I don't know but I could have I could have left this without any marker on it and probably it would have been easier for everybody to see but anyway is what it is you know, you learn through the process as you're going along anyway. I think on the next part, that I, uh, if I do this again, I might just try drawing in lines instead of actually filling in the whole square. And that way I'll know exactly which, if I'm tying on the vertical or the horizontal line. Uh, anyway, it's too late to try that now, but it, it might, um, your pattern might actually even show up better. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to finish this up and hopefully once I pull my template out of there I will have something that resembles a heart shape. The moment of truth has arrived. <clears throat> All right. Not that it's super important, but let me just fill in my corners here so I have my nice little block. Oh, I can see it. Oops. Can you see it on the video? I think it looks like a heart. So that's good news. All right, hopefully I'm not going to make this too confusing, but I am going to switch back to my zebra pattern now just because it's a lot farther along. But before we do anything else, we need to make a bunch of t-shirt yarn. So we're going to make some 
black, since I have a nice big ball of gray here already, we're going to switch to some t-shirt yarn production. So I have my t-shirt here. Uh, men's t-shirts usually are the best if you can find them in the right color. You want to ideally get one that doesn't have any side seams so that you can cut uh, the yarn more quickly. Certainly you could uh, just trim around and around and around in a circle all the way around the t-shirt to cut the yarn, but that takes an awfully long time. You do want to make sure that you're cutting the yarn across the horizontal direction of the t-shirt. So the fastest way to cut t-shirt yarn is to, first we're going to just trim off the edge, or this bottom hem. But I got to find my scissors. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to cut off this bottom hem. My scissors are very squeaky. Anyway, you can see how long this would take if you were just going to cut around in a continuous circle to make your t-shirt yarn. If you just cut around and around and around and around. It takes long enough just to get around the bottom here one time. Alright. Probably help if I flatten this out a little bit more, but I've got it all twisted up. Alright, there we go. Hopefully it made sense what I was saying about the direction of the knit because in order to make the yarn you want to cut strips but you also want to cut it on the stretch in the direction, what am I trying to say, the direction of the stretch so that it'll kind of coil up and make a nice yarn shape. Alright, there we go. Now I just need to cut off, let me shake this out, I'll be right back here. All right. Kind of flatten it out a little. All right, you could be very precise and draw a line, but of course I don't ever bother with those things. So, well, this isn't even in the frame very well, but I'm just trying to cut from this armhole across to the other armhole, so I have a nice tube shape when I'm done. I think you can even see this part, but here we go. All right. Now you can save the top of the shirt, because for this project I can certainly use it. They'll just be shorter pieces of yarn. Now I need to shake this out again and just sort of even it. <clears throat> but you can see what I am left with is just a tube of knit. So I've got one fold. Where is my frame? There we go. So here's the top fold. And I'm just going to take the rest. I'm going to even flatten it out and bring this other fold maybe an inch and a half to two inches from the top, or from the top fold. And then I'm going to fold it again. Gotten really off here. You want to kind of line up your edges as best you can so you're not losing a lot of fabric. I've gotten really cockeyed here. Sorry, I'm not on the screen. All right, here we go, coming back. Did that make any sense? I want these edges to be lined up so that I don't lose a lot of fabric on both sides because I'm gonna have to trim off the edges that are lined up. All right, let's try that again. So, I'm gonna fold, fold, fold to fold. Does that make sense? I'm leaving about an inch and a half or two inches. Move that out. And I'm going to fold it again. And one more. Eh, I don't know. I don't want to cut through that many thicknesses. So I'm going to leave it folded like this, I think. All right, so now this edge is fairly even. 
This edge needs some cleaning up, obviously. Because <clears throat> you want your edges to be the same. And I am losing a lot of knit here, but I probably can use it in shorter pieces. Later on, I'll save that. All right. So now I just want to cut some stuff here too. I guess I'm going to trim this edge off also because I can tell my edges aren't even. And this is probably too thin so I'm going to throw that away. All right. So I want to cut pieces of yarn that are about a half an inch wide. So I'm going to cut a half an inch Pass this or all the way through the first fold and then I'm going to leave about an inch at the top here where I'm not going to cut and then I'm going to continue that idea all the way down to the end of the piece. Once you get to the end you want to kind of space things out so that you end up with the about a half an inch at the end so you might make your cuts a little wider or a little narrower so that you don't end up losing the whole piece on the end. I'm not sure that made any sense. Maybe it'll make sense when we get to the end. Anyway, like I said, I could have folded it again, but you are cutting through a lot of thicknesses, so you want to only you want to do as little cutting as possible, but you also don't want to be cutting through so much fabric that you can't you know that you're hurting your hand or anything. All right. I'm going to stop talking so I can speed this up and then we won't have to sit through so much till I get to the end. All right. All right, so you don't have to make perfect cuts, obviously. You know, there's a, it's a little wider here, a little narrower there, it does not matter. You do want to be semi-consistent but you certainly don't need to measure and mark with a ruler. So here's what I'm talking about. I need to decide whether I'm going to cut two or three more sections. I think I'm going to try to get three but they're going to be a little narrower at the top here. I think we'll be okay though. I don't know if these are going to get now really narrow but all right. I have a section that's too skinny, I'll just cut it out, I guess. All right, here's the fun part, because you're gonna. this is gonna give you one continuous piece of, at this point, just t-shirt string. So the way I like to describe it is, I'm kind of putting my hand in the spine. I might've lost you, let me back up here. All right, so I have all my fringy pieces here, and then this is my top fold that I didn't cut through. So I call that my spine, and I'm just going to put my hand in that folded area, and I'm going to start in the, sort of toward the bottom here, I'm just going to cut a diagonal. So I'm going to cut from the edge to this first slit. And as long as you start correctly, you should be just fine and not get lost because you're cutting from the diagonal to the diagonal. So what I mean is this next cut, I'm going to start from my cut piece here to this piece here. But as you can see, I'm not cutting straight across because this is the, the this cut and this cut are the same cut. So I'm cutting diagonally. And I'm just going to continue that all the way to the end. You want to try to maintain the same width as you're cutting, kind of, if that makes sense. It should be fairly easy to keep it about a half an inch wide. Okay. 
My scissors are very squeaky. <laughs> Alright, I probably should speed this part up too because it gets a little boring and I'm not going to yammer on, so we'll just speed this part up. All right, I'm closing in on the end here. So when I get to the end, you're going to see that I end up sort of with nowhere to go on this last cut, obviously, or not obviously, maybe not obviously, but anyway. Um, so this goes back to the just cut it diagonally until you end up off the edge, which is the way you started the, the uh, cut as well. So now I have a nice big continuous piece of string, I guess, or strands of yarn, or strands of t-shirt, excuse me. And the last step you need to do to make it into the t-shirt yarn, and this is why you want to make sure you pull, you cut it on the, in the direction of the stretch. So you're just going to pull it, and you want to pull it pretty hard. I like to hold it for a second. I'm pulling it really, I'm pulling it pretty tight. And then when you let it go, you have a nice little curved piece that looks much more like yarn. Now this step takes a little while as well, and generally I get a little tired before I'm done with it. But once you have your yarn all stretched out, or cut and stretched out, you can just wind it into a ball and then you're ready to cut it into the about three inch lengths to tie onto the, to the rug. All right, as I mentioned, I'm switching back to my uh, zebra print design just because it's farther, much farther along. Um, I have some little pieces of about three inch uh, pieces of yarn cut in the two different colors. And just to show you how, you, I, I usually start in the middle of my piece. I don't think you really have to. I think you could probably start on one end and just work in lines. What you don't want to do is get yourself kind of into too tight a position where you can't at least access the design from you know easily I like I wouldn't do the black on, and what am I trying to say dear lord um I wouldn't do the black all the black and then go back and do the gray I'd kind of work in linear pattern or in um you know starting from the middle and working outward to the edges so to do this process it's very simple like I said you're going to decide whether you're doing a vertical if you're going to tie on the vertical lines or the horizontal lines and just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to tie on the vertical lines. So I'm just going to push this through, just using my fingers, pull it through, and tie it in a single knot. And that is truly all there is to it. So obviously this doesn't look like anything until the other yarns get tied on there and then they kind of push it up into more of a plushy carpet feel. So you could do, you know, loop it through and tie every time, but I found that it's a little faster. I'm gonna go back to this side because this is where I've been working. To loop the yarn, you know, to loop a bunch of pieces of yarn through and then go back and tie them all at the same time. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna find where I left off here. And you can see, hopefully you can see that I am tying on what is now the horizontal line. So I'm finding my where I left off. Here's my little corner. So I need to start here. And I can see that that's a black line. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my piece through. And rather than tying it, because I have to pull my hand back out and go back and forth, I'm just gonna go to the next one over. And I can see that it's also black. So I'm gonna loop that through. And I'm just gonna work in a straight line all the way across here. It's easier to kind of get everything out of your way one time as well. Because the more you have on there, the tighter it gets and it does get a little crowded and sometimes you have to yank the yarns out of your way so you can see what you're doing. And there's really no rule. You can, you know, you could work in any direction you want, really. Okay, so now you can see I'm switching back to the light color, so I'm going to go to a gray piece. Now 
Anyway, this is just a, um, I, I like to do a lot of crafts in front of the TV. So this isn't a craft that you're going to put together really quickly. But if you're, if you like to sort of just work with your hands and not have to think too hard, which is where I'm at a lot of the time, I find it kind of meditative, I guess. Then this is just a nice activity to work on while you're, you know, I'm, I'm not a knitter, but I, I think of it as sort of in terms of if I were a knitter, I could just sit and, you know, knit. This is, this is my version of knitting, I guess. All right, still working on the gray. Anyway, I think you probably get the gist of it. So this just seems a little faster to work all the way in one row. And then I guess I'm not gonna go all the way to the end because that's gonna get tedious. I don't have that much to say about it. All right, so once you have that whole row filled in, you can go back and you can see, is that in the frame? You can see where your first little yarn is that you need to tie. You want to be a little careful. A lot of times you can get other yarns or yeah, other yarns caught in your knot. It's not the end of the world if you do, but you do want to kind of try to avoid that. You want to make sure you're tying the right two together. Every now and then I've gotten confused about that. See what I mean? I mean like if I left that there, it's going to get tied in my other one, so I want to pull it out of the way. Anyway, it's a very simple process really, but as I mentioned, it does take some time. I'm going to have a lot of TV to watch in order to finish this. But you can come up with your own custom patterns. Like I said before, you probably want to have a fairly simple pattern. But if you have an idea for a little design, you can, and, and you have some t-shirts in the right color, it, you might find it to be sort of a fun project. It does take quite a few t-shirts. I will say that so far on this piece, I'm probably not even quite half done. Maybe I'm half done. But I have used at least four t-shirts so far. I mean, I've used the, at least, uh, yeah, at least two gray t-shirts and at least two black t-shirts, I would say. So it isn't, it does take a more, it takes more t-shirts than I thought it was going to, I guess is what I'm thinking, what I'm saying. Which is another reason why you want to sort of plan out your design and your colors. If you have a lot of t-shirts that are a certain color, then you're, you're all set. But I kind of wanted, to, I've avoided using you know, too many bright colors just because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to match them very well. So the gray and the black work really well because you can always find gray and black t-shirts. So I have a lot of tying to do and then we'll come back and trim up the top, finish the back and the sides. All right, so I've finished tying all of my t-shirt yarns on and I did have a couple of thoughts that I also wanted to share with you. The one thing about one of the things about this uh, non-slip mat from the Dollar Tree, at least, is that it's kind of messy. It seems to lose this, I don't know, it falls apart, which I was afraid was going to make it less sturdy, but I didn't have any problems with it. I thought maybe that the mat would tear in certain spots, but I didn't have any problems at all. Uh, it is a little bit messy, though, as is cutting the t-shirt yarn itself, you're going to have a little lint for a while until that kind of works itself out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to put some backing on here just to make it a little more sturdy and cleaner. I don't know, you, you wouldn't have to, I guess. You could probably just leave it the way it is. But you can see that some of these, some of these little rubber pieces are still coming off. <clears throat> so I've cut a piece of just black scrap fabric that I have and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the back 
of my rug here. And to do that, my plan, so I've cut a piece that's just a, a couple inches bigger all the way around than my mat itself. And to do that, I'm going to use, let me start at this other end, my plan, we'll see how it works. You can see it kind of curls up, so I want to help it flatten out a little bit too. Hopefully it will work its way out here a little bit. Um, my plan is to use some of this Fabri-Tac glue on the back, but I'm going to leave about an inch or an inch and a half all the way around where I don't glue. And then I'm going to go back in and tuck the edge under and either glue it or sew it down. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out. So, I'm going to kind of get this flat. And I guess I'm going to put the glue on this part. <clears throat> I haven't worked with this glue a lot, but I've heard people rave about how it is for how amazing it is for fabric and things. So I'm just going to work in kind of small spaces here. I think one of the things about it is is that it dries pretty quickly. So like I said, I just want to leave about an inch and a half edge all the way around. And I'm going to go back and kind of Work this around with my fingers a little. And then I'm just going to lay the fabric on there, making sure that I have all my edges covered. <clears throat> and then I will Do another piece. I don't want to pull off where I've glued, but <clears throat> excuse me, I've had a cold for days. I don't think I have to get glue everywhere, but you do want to get a healthy amount of glue, I guess. You can see I didn't bother to iron my piece of fabric either. Alright, we'll speed this part up so that I don't have to keep talking. Alright, like I said, I have not used that glue a lot, and uh, it does dry pretty quickly and it's very hard to get off your hands, so you might want to use something other than your finger to smooth out the glue like I did. But uh, the next step, this has only been sitting a few minutes and it is, uh, you know, it is holding. I, I could certainly pull it off if I wanted to, which I don't, so. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my edge. I probably need to trim it down a little bit and then I can fold it under. And I'm going to make sure I get all my tails out of the way. So I think I can cut off about an inch here. So I just want to fold this under and kind of match it up to the edge of the slip resistant rubber mat part. So I'm just going to line it up like that. Alright, so once I have it lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and put a few straight pins in. And then my plan will be to go back in and I guess hand sew around the edge here. Just to hold this edge down. <clears throat> Make 
make sure I get all my tails out of the way. And that I'm keeping everything flat and smooth. And I'm gonna stop here because I need to fold a corner. So let me turn this around again. Now I need to trim this edge off again as well. Probably the same amount. About an inch. Maybe more. Go a little more than that, I guess. It's just going to be folded twice here is all. Make sure I'm still getting my tails out of the way and I just want to match up this corner. So I've got it folded. It doesn't really matter which end you fold first. But you just want to make sure you have kind of a nice clean corner. See that hopefully I guess I can let it out a little bit on this side make sure I'm getting my tails out of the way and there we are so I'm gonna finish pinning and then we'll be back to do a little bit of stitching all right to sew this back piece on I'm using a double strand of thread just because I want a little sturdier hold and I'm just taking little stitches, catching some of the knit or the rubber mat, it doesn't really matter. And then just sliding the needle along the fold of the black piece for about an eighth of an inch. So I'm kind of doing eighth inch little stitches all the way around. So I'm gonna finish working my way around the mat and then we'll be back to trim up the top and finish the rug. All right, so I finished stitching my backing on. It's a little bit loose here where I haven't glued it, but it's um, helping it lay a little flatter and it will protect the back. So I think it'll work just fine. And the next step is to go back in and trim off the uh, yarns. If you cut your yarns to a nice consistent length, you might not have to do this step, but I like to um, tighten it up a little bit the yarns are closer together at the bottom so they don't go quite as errantly and get into the spaces where they're not supposed to be. So if you trim it down, you'll have a little tighter finish. Um, you do want to be sure to use some good scissors. I very much recommend this Ginger brand. I've had these for years and they're comfortable to use and they stay nice and sharp. So it's definitely worth having a good pair of scissors to do this. All right, there's really no rhyme or reason to how you trim this. Um, hopefully you can see it. I've trimmed this area here. And of course, there's still some little pieces popping up. You're not going to get it perfect. I've already gotten a little OCD over here, I think. But uh, basically, you just want to kind of straighten up your yarns so they're standing straight. So that gives you kind of an idea of how long you want to trim them. And then the other thing I'm doing is I'm sort of pulling the yarns back into the space that they're supposed to be in because they kind of tend to bleed into each other a little bit and if you pull them back into their area before you trim them they're going to have a little you're going to have a little bit cleaner line you want to be a little careful not to get too close to the knot but you can take quite a bit off So this does take a while, it's pretty messy. You're gonna wanna have a nice place you can sweep up easily. And every now and then you might wanna shake the mat off because you're gonna get little pieces that fall back in to the mat. Anyway, 
Uh, you can certainly spend a lot of time doing this or a little time doing it. It's, it's entirely up to you how much you want to trim off. I would just say less is more. You might have to go back and trim pieces more than once. This area right here, I would have really long pieces, so I'm going to take some big chunks out and go back later and kind of smooth it out here. But this does take a little while if you're going to do a lot of trimming. Uh, and like I said, it's entirely up to you aesthetically whether you if you want kind of varied heights of Yarn you can certainly leave it and not trim it at all But I wanted mine to be a little more uniform So I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'll be back with my finished zebra rug All right, here is my finished zebra print rug t-shirt rug you can see my pile of trimmings in the back there. I got pretty aggressive and trimmed down fairly close to the knot so that I'd have a nice tight uh, finish. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.